What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you've seen the cross-headed corner in the last video, you know, it's awesome. So here, a little update on it. We got this thing prepped. So we went around this with uh, powerhouse caulking all around the edges. We caulked this joint, we caulked it to the jam. I primed the inside detail right here, and then I've sanded this thing all down. For the most part, I still gotta run my surf prep around it, and we'll, I'll show you that here shortly. But keeping with the tradition of this garage shop, we are actually gonna paint this thing DeWalt yellow. So this is the closest thing we could find. This is a Rust-Oleum col color called Marigold. And then of course, we're gonna do a black undertone and distress it a little bit, just like our Makita window over here. So we've got the DeWalt. We're gonna have Milwaukee red around that door there. And then we have the Makita window already. So pretty sweet. This is intended to be kind of like a lesson on how to rattle can a door. Not that you'd typically do this, but like I said, when I painted that one over there, I don't want to bust out the sprayer and get these custom colors and stuff just to do this fun little project. So we go to the rattle cans. So here's what we need to do now. We've got this thing pretty much prepped, but I need to run this sander across it. This is my surf prep sander with this foam pad here. And this is gonna get all in those fine details there. So I'm gonna run around this. This will probably take a couple minutes and then I'm gonna blow it off and then we can get to our black undercoat. Now, I don't recommend this if you're doing this in someone's house. I've never rattle canned anything in someone's house, but for getting this fine dust off here, I'm just gonna use my, my blower here. Again, this would not be recommended in an interior that's finished, but we're in our garage. So moving right along here, the only bad thing about these cans is they're oil based. So they leave horrible fumes in the air, really detrimental to your health and give you a headache. So we've got a window right here in the laundry room. The laundry room is a whole another story. We started messing around with that like months ago and it's been put on the back burner and trust me, I've been hearing about it. So we'll be showing you some updates in there soon, but we've got this all covered off. I'm gonna open that window, set up my air mover on a ladder, and we're just gonna get these fumes just exhausted out of here. So let me get that set up real quick. We got the air mover on. I know it's gonna be kind of annoying in the background for background noise, but we kind of need that. We want you know everything to go out that way. And one other thing, obviously protecting the floor, getting the walls protected. I mean, these walls are gonna be redone anyways, at least on this side. So just getting this stuff protected. You know, I don't want all this overspray all over my stuff here. Yeah, we're just gonna put a really light coat on with this. This is just flat black. And yeah, that's gonna be our undertone. And I don't know if really the word is undertone. What I say when I mean that is that when I distress this, because I'm gonna distress it, I want some of that black to show through. Like DeWalt is black and yellow. So I want, you know, some black. And I really like distressing. If it's done right, I feel like it can be overdone where it's too rustic and there's always like, you know, something you're trying to balance there. But with this, you know, distressing on this, it's just gonna highlight all these little details. Like I could distress a little bit here, distress that, and it's just gonna stand out a little bit more. Okay, pretty good. I'm gonna hold the can about 10 to 12 inches away and just lightly glaze over it. And this is exactly how I'd spray with regular, my regular sprayer. It would be the same exact pattern. And I do want to get on top of here too. All right. Ah. 
just a little bit there. So there's our bottom coat, if you will, undercoat. We're gonna let this dry completely, and then if there's any drips or anything, we can sand those out. And then at that time, we can go ahead and put our marigold yellow on. Should be pretty cool. I just wanna get a little glimpse of how this is gonna look. I'm just gonna spray it right here. I'll spray it right here next to this black so we can get that real DeWalt look. <laughs> That's gonna be so cool. This only works in a garage. Like I would not, actually I probably would paint all the doors and stuff inside the house like yellow and Makita and all that teal and red Milwaukee stuff. But I'm not allowed to do that. Oh, magnetic tape. <laughs> this is dry now. What I actually did, I actually burnished it with one of these pads right here. And the reason I did that is because I did have a couple small little drips right here one here and one down here i just kind of buffed those out those are completely gone now and while i was doing that john went to the store because we were looking at this yellow this is that marigold it looks a little too orangey like a little too dark so we went and got this sun yellow and we've been kind of playing around with this but let me show you what the sun yellow looks like right here you can see it's a lot brighter now we think if they made a color that like mixed both of these, that would be perfect, but we can't find it. We don't have it here locally. I don't even know if they make it. But anyways, what we're gonna do, because we've been experimenting, we're gonna do this bright yellow first, and then we're gonna fade in this color on top. We've experimented with this and it seems to work out pretty good. So at this point, this thing's all been, you know, buffed with this pad and it's time to put our first coat of the sun yellow on top. One other thing too, I'm gonna probably put this on in like four coats because I do not want any drips on this final. And uh, yeah, this stuff's pretty drippy. This thing looks cool already. That right there is what we call a fog coat. Just getting it on. The next coat will really cover up a lot of that blotchiness that you see there. All right, so first coat took about five minutes to dry. You see what we're working with. This looks super cool. You can see all the detail in all of this molding work here. Round two on the fog coat, and we're just gonna keep repeating this process until we have full coverage. So we have our final coat of yellow on here now, and we are actually not going to add this marigold color on top like I originally wanted to. I wanted to blend them, but I was practicing, 
and it's a lot harder than than I thought. So DeWalt is, you know, more yellow than orange, and this is just a little too orange for what I want here. So this is done. It's got that gloss to it. I definitely don't want that, so I've got this pad here. This is the pad that I've been using to kind of knock down in between coats, and this will actually turn it into more of a satin finish. So I'm gonna buff this whole thing with this pad. It's been drying for like an hour now, and then this will be more satin, and then we can get to distressing, which is the fun part. I'm happy with that. Knock that sheen down pretty well. So it's more of a satin sheen now. It's super smooth. And just from this little polishing pad right here, you can see I've already got some distress marks, which is great, because that's what I'm going for. Um, but this is just me not putting really any pressure on it. And you can see I've got that black undertone kind of coming through on those detailed edges. And that's really what I'm going for, like that right there. So now what I can do, I, I'm actually gonna continue with this. So if I put a lot of pressure on, like if you look at this edge here, if I put a lot of pressure on this, you know, it'll come through like that. So you can see, you know, that's kind of the idea here. I want that, that black kind of weathered look to come through. So now I'm just gonna go around, mess around with this. It's gonna take me a little bit more time because I'm gonna, you know, mess with it over here, mess with it over here, you know, sporadically do this so it doesn't look so, you know, intentional. I want it to look a little bit like it, it's been here for a while and it just got worn out over time. I'm gonna mess around with that and just see what we come up with. You'll notice too, I'm not really hitting the face of this stuff. I'm just hitting the edges. It makes more sense to do it that way because, you know, if you're, if this actually has wear on it, it's gonna wear on these outer detail pieces. It's not really gonna get to the face of stuff. I'm gonna step back and look at that before I get too carried away. That looks pretty sweet. I'm real happy with this. This thing looks absolutely amazing. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull the plastic back now. So let's do this. It's really gonna pop on this white wall here. amazing what you can do with some pieces of trim, a couple of basic pieces, a can of spray paint or two, and a little creativity. But anyways guys, there it is and uh, couldn't be happier. So let me know if you have any questions, any tips, tricks on this stuff. I always learn stuff down in the comment section as well. So other than that, we'll see you guys on the next one.
see something real quick. This is a really a moment of truth right here. How good did I do? Oh, what? 0, 0.0, let's hear a, a confirmation. Oh, what? Okay. Guys, if that was off by a degree, look what you get. My man, dropping back down, 0, 0.0. Just thought I'd point that out real quick.